Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. What we're going to show you how to do today is take a sample of your engine oil, transmission fluid, or whatever oil you want to take an analysis of and send it to a company called Blackstone Labs in Fort Wayne, Indiana and get an analysis of the oil that you send them. Now, why would you want to do an oil analysis? Well, an oil analysis is going to tell you some things about how your engine is wearing, how well your engine oil is doing, whether you're changing the oil at a good interval, are you doing it excessively where your engine oil could have lasted two or 3,000 more miles and you're doing it too often, you can maybe save yourself some money in the interval you do your oil changes. It will also tell you if you have some different contaminants in your oil, whether maybe you have coolant in your oil, which leads you to believe that you have a blown head gasket. It tells you a lot of things. Let me read right off of the website of what the test they'll do for you. The first test they're going to do is they're going to do a spectral exam. And that spectral exam analyzes the oil and it lets you know what metals and any additives that are present in the oil. With the metals, if you have an abnormal amount of certain metals in the sample, that's going to let them know that your engine is wearing outside the norm that's going to be kind of a heads up like, hey, something's not right with your engine because the values for the metals that they're showing are not within the normal range and you should be concerned because something's going on with your engine. The next test they do is they do an insolubles test. They measure the abrasive solids in your oil. This is basically letting you know how well your oil filtration is going. So how well your engine oil filter or maybe your transmission fluid filter is doing its job. The next test they do is a viscosity test. They're gonna let you know the viscosity of the oil that they believe you have in the engine. And hopefully that's gonna match up with the oil you've been using. If it falls outside the norm, that could let you know that your oil has been contaminated with fuel or possibly coolant. Final test they do is a flashpoint test, and the flashpoint test is basically determine, hey, is your oil contaminated with fuel? If the oil flashes at a lower flashpoint, that's letting them know that you have the presence of fuel in your oil, and again, that's not so great for your oil because it thins it out. So those are all the basic tests, and if you want to read more, you can find this right on their website. We're going to put a link in the video description where you can read all about these tests. When you order this test, you don't pay until you actually send them the sample and you give them all your personal information with your credit card information and that's when they charge you for it. So you can order these sample kits, however many you want, for free and then when you send the sample in, you pay for it. Let me show you what's included in this kit. So here's everything that comes in this container that they send you. You have your instructions right here. It tells you how to take the sample, how to package it up. They give you this little sticker you could put on, probably your windshield to let you know what next time you want to take a sample. They give you a little plastic bag to put the oil sample in. This is the wrap around. It's an absorbent material to wrap around your sample. So in case it leaks inside the plastic bag, this is going to absorb it. And then it gives you the paper slip that you can either fill out by hand or you can go online, fill out the same slip via a PDF file, print it up on your printer, and then put everything in this package and send it to the company. The postage is already paid and that's everything with the kit. Okay, so now I'm ready to take the sample of my engine oil and my transmission fluid. Before you get underneath the rig with your drain pan and your tools, mark the sample. So I put my name, the unit ID, which I said 2000 Toyota 4Runner, and I went one step further and I said engine oil on one, and then I said trans fluid on the other one. So there's no way they can hopefully mix it up. So now that I have these labeled, I'm going to get underneath the rig with my drain pan, with my socket to loosen the drain pan bolt. And then the key that they say is that you don't want to take the sample at the beginning of the drain or at the end of the drain. So somewhere in the middle, I think there's a possibility that this could be kind of messy because you're going to be introducing this into the stream of the oil. But if I guess if you have a steady hand, maybe you can do it without making a huge mess. I'm going to get underneath the rig now. We're going to open the drain pan bolt and we're going to take our sample. One thing I forgot to mention to you before you take your fluid sample is you want it to be at operating temperature. So whether it's your engine oil, your automatic transmission fluid, maybe manual transmission gear oil or whatever you want to take a sample of, 
just make sure it's warm and at operating temperature. For your engine, you could just let your engine idle there until your temperature gauge goes up to the normal operating range. If you have an automatic transmission, you can take your vehicle for a drive down the highway, maybe five miles and come back to get the fluid up to operating temperature. Or you can do it another way by putting it in gear in drive, putting your left foot on the service brake, have the parking brake set too, just as a backup, and then give it a little throttle to raise the RPMs to say about a thousand RPMs. And if you have a way to monitor your transmission temperature, either with a scan gauge or a phone app like Torque Pro that's getting information from a Bluetooth OBD2 reader, then you could sit there and watch your transmission temperature go up to the operating range, and then you could shut it down and drain it and take your fluid sample. If you don't have a way to monitor your transmission temperature, either via one of those I already mentioned, or maybe you have an aftermarket gauge you installed, then I don't suggest you do it that way with putting your foot on the service brake and putting it in drive and giving it some throttle because you have no way to know what temperature you're getting it to and your temperature will climb pretty fast by doing that, by putting a load on the transmission. So just go drive it down the road for five miles or so, drive it back, and then your automatic transmission fluid will most likely be somewhere in that normal operating range. All right, so now let's go take our engine oil sample and our automatic transmission fluid sample. Okay, depending on your vehicle, you're gonna possibly have skid plates in the way which protects the underside of your engine and maybe your transmission too. So I already got the skid plates out of the way for my 2000 Toyota 4Runner. Now what I'm gonna do is break free the drain pole on the engine oil pan. I already have the cap off ready to go. After I see what I think about half of the fluid is uh, left the oil pan, then I'm gonna introduce this into the stream, get my sample, and then let it continue to drain. Okay, I'm gonna break free the drain pan bolt. That's loose. Okay, it's draining. I think a good amount has come out, so I'm going to introduce it into the stream. And that's full. And then I'll just let it drain the rest of the way. It's a little bit high, so I'm just going to pour a little bit out so it's not all the way to the top. And I'm going to put my cap on. Okay, now I'm going to take a sample of my transmission fluid. The only difference here is I have this 18 quart food grade container that I'm going to use to let me know how much I've drained out. So it's just a lot easier to know how much to add back. So you can get these on Amazon and I'll put a link in the video description if you'd like to buy the exact one that I purchased. On my drain pan bolt for the transmission, it's a, again a 14 millimeter. So I'm just gonna break it loose and then take it off with my hand. If it was tightened to spec, it shouldn't be that tight. Again, just like the engine oil, you wanna take a sample somewhere in the middle of the fluid. You don't want to take it at the very beginning or at the very end of it draining out of the pan. So it's draining. I know from past experience that I usually drain out about four to four and a half quarts. I'm gonna let this get to about the two quart mark and then I'm gonna take my sample because that will pretty much be dead center in the middle of the fluid. All right, it's right about two quarts. I'm gonna take my sample. And there it is. I got my sample and now I'm just gonna let it drain out the rest of the way. Okay, I've got my oil sample. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta package it up and send it in the mail. So you take your container, you take your absorbent material, you wrap it around the container. You grab your plastic bag, you place the sample in the plastic bag, seal it up, put it in the container. It might be good to try to get as much air out of here as possible so it'll fit in easier. You take your information slip that you filled out on your computer or you filled it out by hand. You stick it inside here, however you get it in there to where it doesn't destroy it. 
You close the lid, make sure it's tight. Drop it in the mailbox or your local post office and then wait for the return analysis. Pretty easy. All right, so I got the analysis back from Blackstone Labs for my engine oil and my automatic transmission fluid. They email you PDF files of the analysis and this is what it looks like. It shows the make and model of your vehicle, the fuel type, whether it's a gasoline or a diesel engine, and then it shows the oil type. You actually give them that when you send in your sample, you tell them what oil you use. And then they say the oil change interval, which you also gave them when you sent the sample in. Right below this is your personal information and I'll scroll past that. I know I'm popular, so I have to keep the paparazzi off of my front porch. So then it gives you a description of what they found. It says, Tim, this is a great way to start your Forerunners oil analysis program. Universal averages show typical wear for a 5VZFE engine after about 5,800 miles of oil use. And then they say aluminum is just high enough to mark at five parts per million, twice the average value or higher, but it isn't a big concern. This level may be normal for your engine and the use it sees, even if it shows a little extra piston bearing wear. Other metals are in great shape and don't show any mechanical problems. The viscosity was fine and the TBN was strong at 4.9 since 1.0 or less is low. If all is well, try 5K miles and check back. Now when it comes to the aluminum level, what I did is I looked up that castrol oil that I was using. It's a partial synthetic and what I learned about it is that the amount of aluminum in the oil brand new is actually a little bit higher than average. So that's very possibly the reason why my aluminum number was high. It's not because my engine is getting excessive piston wear. It's because the oil as is comes with a higher than normal aluminum level. So that's what I think that is. Now I'll describe what that TBN value means. I'm going to read it right off the Bob is the oil guy website because they do a really good job of describing what it means. So I'm on Bob is the oil guy website and here's what they say about TBN. The TBN total base number is the lubricants reserve alkalinity measured in milligrams of potassium hydroxide or calcium sulfonate per gram of oil. In more simple terms, it is the amount of active additives remaining. This number is important because combustion byproducts tend to form acidic compounds and the TBN is the acid neutralizing capacity of the lubricant. The TBN does not decrease linearly with the time it has been in use. Example, it could start out at a TBN of 10, drop to 5 after only 1,000 miles of use, and then stabilize around 3 for a majority of the remaining service life. A TBN of less than 1 is generally considered to indicate near depletion of the additives and is a safe point to change your oil. Once the additives are depleted, then the infamous sludge that the crazy Scott from Castro commercials has been warning us about can begin to form. A virgin sample of the identical oil that I used here, Pennzoil Ultra 5 W30, begins with a TBN of 11.7. So basically, the TBN number is showing how many additives you have left in your oil to basically protect your engine. And when that TBN number gets low, that means your engine oil really isn't protecting your engine all that well, and you should have changed it by then. So now I'll scroll down and show you what the rest of the report looks like. It's showing all the different levels of the metals that they find in the oil. Then it discusses the viscosity numbers, flashpoint in Fahrenheit, the percentage of fuel in the oil, percentage of antifreeze, percentage of water, percentage of insolubles, and then it gives you that TBN number that we just talked about. Now let's take a look at the analysis of my automatic transmission fluid. Again, it starts off with the description of the make and model of your transmission, the type of fluid you were using, and the interval that you changed it at. I choose to do a drain and refill of the pan every 10,000 miles. I've never performed a full flush on 
this transmission. What I do instead is do regular drain and refills to keep my fluid in good shape. Some people will claim that doing drain and refills doesn't really do a good job of keeping your fluid in good shape, but here's a report that confirms what I've been telling people that drain and refills actually do a very good job of keeping your fluid in great shape. So here is the written description of how my oil is doing after a 10,000 mile change. It says, Tim, you've done plenty of drain and refills on this transmission to have washed out any residual break in material that might have been present at the beginning. A lot of transmissions are lucky to see a handful of services during their lifetime and as such usually have a fair amount of metal in them. Universal averages for this type of transmission show typical wear after 45,000 miles on the oil. Wear metals from your transmission are extremely low after 10,000 miles of use. No obvious signs of mechanical trouble here. The tan read 1.0 showing very little acidity. So far, so good. So this report tells me that my regular drain and refills are doing an excellent job of keeping my fluid in good shape. So I'm going to continue doing my drain and refills every 10,000 miles. Now let me go back to the Bob is the Oil Guy website and read from the website what this tan value means. I'm back on the Bob is the Oil Guy website and here's what it says about the tan. The tan total acid number is the amount of potassium hydroxide measured in milligrams needed to neutralize the acids in one gram of oil. When plotted on a graph with the TBM, the point at which two lines cross is optimal point to change your oil and indicates nearing additive depletion. For cost reasons, I didn't get the tan test done because the TBN is a more reliable method to determine the active additive remaining. Now this is interesting because Blackstone didn't give me a TBN number for the transmission fluid, but they did give me a TAN number. So maybe the TAN number has more to do with the transmission fluid than with motor oil. That's just a guess. But basically what it's measuring is how much acid you have in your oil. And because my number was low, means that I still have enough additives in the oil to combat the acidity. So that basically means my oil was still in good shape because the acid level was low. Okay, now I'll show you what the rest of the report looks like for my automatic transmission fluid. Again, it's showing all the different levels of metals in the oil. What I forgot to show you in these reports is on the far right, they show the universal averages. And so you can compare what your levels of metals are with the universal averages. And when your levels are outside the universal averages, that's when they flag it and mention something in the report. And then here again is the same kind of information they give for the oil report. They talk about your viscosity levels, the flash point in Fahrenheit, the percentage of fuel in the fluid, which doesn't relate to automatic transmission fluid, and the antifreeze level also doesn't relate. They did give a value for the percentage of water, and it's possible to get moisture buildup in your transmission. You could also get water in your transmission, say if you were four-wheeling and you went through a deep creek or a river crossing and you submerged your transmission and maybe some water got into the breather. Another way you can get a mixing of water with your automatic transmission fluid is if your transmission cooler cracked inside the bottom of the radiator and then you got a mixing of the engine coolant with your ATF and that contaminated mixture made its way back to your transmission. There's a term for it on Toyota forums and they call it the pink milkshake. Then it shows the percentage of insolubles. Like I said, they didn't give me a TBN number, but they did give me a TAN value. Okay, we're pretty much all done with this video. And I know what you must be thinking. Timmy must have had to wait a hell of a long time to get those reports back from Blackstone Labs because he was able to grow a full mustache while he was waiting. Well, not exactly. I got those reports back from Blackstone Labs via an email to me pretty quick. I think at most it was a couple weeks. But I sat on the footage for a very long time, almost two years, because after I got those reports back, I got sidetracked on other projects with Sean and other people. And then I just shelved 
this video for a long time. Recently, I was going through some of my old files and I spotted this folder with these video clips and I said, hey, we never finished this video. So we're finishing it now. In closing, I do think it is pretty valuable to get an oil analysis for your engine oil, for your automatic transmission fluid, or maybe you want to get an analysis of some other type of oil, like maybe the gear oil in your manual transmission, or maybe the gear oil in your transfer case, or maybe the gear oils in your differentials. For whatever fluid you want to take an analysis of to figure out, hey, am I renewing the fluid at a regular enough interval to keep my component in good shape, whether that component is the engine or the transmission or transfer case or manual transmission or your differentials. It's just giving you some information of how well you're doing with your interval of oil changes. That oil analysis is also telling you about the wear that's happening in that component. So if you had a really high metal value, that might be telling you something that, hey, something's going wrong with my engine or my transmission or whatever it is, and it's giving you a heads up. Something's about to fail pretty soon. So maybe you don't take that 10,000 mile road trip. You know, maybe you do a little bit more investigating to make sure your vehicle is sound for a long trip. Or it lets you know that component is going out and maybe you need to start saving some money for a replacement engine or a replacement transmission because those things are expensive. In the video description, we'll put a link to Blackstone Labs so you can order your own oil sample kits for whatever oils you wanna get an analysis of. And then we'll also put a link to the Bob is the Oil Guy website that discusses in very good detail of what all those values mean for the different metals, for that TBN value, for the TAN value. It gives a really, really good description, better than the Blackstone Labs does. So we'll put a link to that also. With all that said, thank you for watching Toyota Time with Team of the Toolman and Sean. We'll be back with more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye bye. Sick mods and happy do it yourself wrenching people. Bye bye.